Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome to Boulder Canyon. This is the beginning of our new super hardcore Let's Play series. And when I say super hardcore, I do mean super hardcore. We've gone into hardcore mode, uh, but I've set myself a few little rules and so on just to make things a little bit more difficult for us. Um, when you start off in the map, you start off next to this house. Uh, you don't actually own the house, though, not in um, the garage. It's not something that you can sell. It's just part of the map, but that's your spawn point on the map. So it's kind of like ever 17 with that. So we spawn up here, and I did originally think that this would be the best spot in order to sort of start off, because if you look at the lands, there's actually the smallest chunk of land right there. Um, 191. Actually, that one is a little bit smaller down there. But we've got various chunks of land all around the map that we can go and buy if we want to, which we will be eventually doing in order to be able to expand. And then you've got that over there. The sawmill bit there is actually in the wrong place. It should be up here because that's where the sawmill is. It's in that bit there, but still, it's, it's fine. That bit doesn't matter. Um... So we go back to the map over, you can see it's all just trees everywhere. There, There is only trees, there is nothing else. We've got a shop and we've got a gas station over here. There is no cell points other than the sawmill. And if we want to get cell points later, we will have to get a mod cell point that we will place down. And I will place that down very, it, it will be one cell point only and I will probably sell it set it down with like the shop or maybe with the sawmill because that's kind of where we're shipping things out from the map um uh, but we would in order to be able to do that we would basically we pay quite a chunk of money in order to be able to start shipping out other goods besides forestry so there's an additional challenge there are no contracts there's no contracts available on the map anyway so that bit we don't need to worry about uh, we have a loan of one of uh, $500,000. We have no money at all. I have spent the, the land purchase and I have one chainsaw. I got rid of everything else. I got rid of it completely. Um, I've also gone into the settings and I have altered. It normally says uh, it's like 300 percent i think annual interest on the loan i changed that to 500 percent so i've actually increased the amount that we got to pay each midnight on our loan interest to make it a bit more difficult for us um and that should also simulate the cost of like fuel and stuff for the maybe for the um, chainsaw that sort of thing um the other stipulations that I have is that we will not, under any circumstances, be able to lease any machinery. Everything that we use on this map, we will have to buy. So, first of all, we are up here, right? We are up in this area up here. The land that we own, however, is down here, right? That's the chunk of land that I decided to buy. Uh, mainly because it's a bit close to the sawmill, and you'll appreciate in a minute just how far we've got to run in order to be able to get down to that sawmill. Before I do that, though, I want to go up here, and I want to just have a look from the top of the hill, and I want to show you this map, the bird's eye view that you can sort of get from this map. Um, I mean, we can stick to the track if you really want to. We can go up around here. You follow the track all the way around. So we, there's a few bits of timber that we can pick up. And we could bring them down off of the mountain here. And we could use these and we could sell them. We could make a little bit of money out of those. Not a huge amount. And then you come up here. We've got an old, there's just an old dump up here. We've got several branches and stuff kicking around here. Um, I don't know what that is buried under the ground but yeah we, we, we've got lots of junk and rubbish up here on the very top someone lived here and they've made a terrible dreadful mess it looks awful it looks absolutely awful what they've done with the place but if we come out here you can get an idea of what this map is like this is just a rough feeling because you can't get you can't actually go and see the trees um you can't see all of the trees from all the way up here. So you can see there's the sawmill. There's the sawmill zone over there. And you can see it's, 
it's not particularly rough, and that's what I quite like about this map. It's not unnecessarily rough. It's covered with trees, yes, but once we've cleared the trees, um, we're not going to have to spend ages and a fortune leveling the land out a bit in order to be able to start farming. We should be able to get on with the farming fairly well. Um, and then you've got a load, load more stuff way off over in the distance. So this is going to be our home for a little while until we grow bored with it or we find somewhere better but this is the general idea is that we're going to do our super hardcore series from here for now and then if we find somewhere a bit better later on we will do that some people have suggested i should use the updated grizzly hills i don't plan to be doing the same map that dagwin is using for his sort of series i mean my super hardcore is kind of um well, I'm not going to say it's the same. It's it, it does have similarities to Dagoin's survival thing that he started doing. Um, and yeah, I think it was around the time that I started doing the hardcore series in FS17. Uh, but anyway, we've I, I don't want to be doing it on the same map. I don't want to be doing it on the same map as him because you know what happens is it just ends up with lots of people come on. Oh my. Oh my goodness me, you're using the same map as what Dagwin is, um, yada yada yada, I thought that was him, you just copycat, and generally it starts all kinds of arguments and causes problems and headaches that I don't want, and so, no, I'm going to wait until there are other logging maps before we move out. Looks quite cool up through here. But yeah, you can see how far we've already had to go, that would be the edge of our land right there, if that was the bit that we bought. So we have to go all the way along here, and in order to be able to get to the sawmill bit, we've got a long way to go. Look here, we go all the way up there, all the way down. I'm gonna, I am gonna cut cross country down here, but you'll see. I don't want to have to carry the timber that far, right? That is an obscene distance to have to carry a load of timber just so that we can get to the sawmill. And we'd have to do this with every single log. We've got no way of not doing this with every single log. So we would have to do it with every single log that we go past, uh, or that we collect. And I really don't want to do that at all. Uh, the other thing with the Super Hardcore Let's Play series is that I don't cut anything out. We do everything on screen. And, yeah, I did just cut out then because uh, I, I had to deal with some real-life issues. Um, so, yeah, ordinarily, we don't cut anything out at all. There is nothing cut out of the gameplay. It is all included. So, we own up to this corner right down here. That's... We're running along our land. The other side of the land is not ours. The, the Up against where the sawmill is. I like his sawmill. I do. He's got this really high wall that goes all the way around it, so you can't just, like, go cruising up to the sawmill really easily and waltz right in front door. Um, the speed limit, that sign is already laid down flat. You've got to come up here, and this is the bit that he's going to make it difficult for us to start with. Okay, you come in here. Wood chips are right over there, but timber... It took me ages to find this, by the way. I was looking around. I was going around this bit and going around this bit. And I couldn't find it at all. And you click on the map and you look at the bit to the sawmill. And that puts you up on the hill up over there. So, no, that's no good either. Nope. you got to bring it up here into this bit here. And here is the cell box for the timber. There. Right. That first one, we've carried that all the way from our home we get $214 for that. Now, you see the kind of task that we've got ahead of us. You, 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 you're just kind of grasping it. Just a little bit. Now, I was also considering what we should do about time scale. So, I'm not sure about that. Um, obviously, if we keep it on five times at all times, it could get complicated. If we keep it on 15 times, we're going to be using up a um right it, it could get interesting with the, the time scale on there one thing i am going to do is we're just going to go into here i've got the interactive zone markers they're going to stay on field info uh we've got all of that uh actually i don't want any of them it's over here plant withering i'm going to turn that off 
I keep that off for gameplay purposes. It just makes it a bit easier. Crop destruction. I'll keep that on for now. It doesn't really matter for us at the moment. But uh, periodic plowing, um, lime, weeds. I won't have an auto save for reasons I've previously discussed. Um, and then off on all of the buying stuff. So that's fairly normal. This is this is going to be fairly normal stuff for us. And then slow on there. Uh, economy is under this one, isn't it? Isn't it? Where's the economy bit? There was a, there's a setting somewhere for economy. Uh, dirt trap. E econ economy difficulty. No. Economy difficulty needs to be on hard. So that shouldn't have been two hundred and fourteen dollars at all. That should have been something different. That should have been something different altogether. Never mind. We'll leave it like that. So that's where we've got to go. We've got to get it all the way up to there. We've got a five hundred thousand dollar loan. And I've increased the percentage, the annual um, percentage that we've got to pay on that each year. Or it, so it'll be increased the payment each night. So I don't know how well that's going to work out. But I would say that we want to keep it on at least, fifth, on at least five times. Maybe 15 times until at least we've got stuff planted. So I'm not really sure what to do about the um, time scale. I'm thinking that we won't have a hard and fast rule. But... Um, until we... Oh, by the way, I bought a steel um, chainsaw this time. Uh, last couple of times I've had... Uh, I think it's pronounced Johns uh, Johnson. Maybe not Johnson. I, I can't remember. Um, but I, I normally go for Askvana, and I decided not to this time. Um, I've gone for a steel, because I've had a few people asking me if I can get one of these. So I decided to go for one of these this time. There. We now have that one cut down. Now, can we pick... We cannot pick that one up means that we're going to have to cut that tree in half right there. Like that. I can pick that one up. And I can pick that one up. So I can't just go and chuck the stuff over the wall either. So i got to do this twice. i got to take this one up. This it, It's going to be very tedious and slow for us to start this off. So much so... That I was seriously considering, like, getting a little bit of extra loan and just getting us a very small vehicle just to start things off. Um, we'll see. I'll see what it's like after this episode. Um, and I will make a judgment call on whether we want to get another one. So I can bring this one up here. And I can... Well, we, we can run fairly fast. We, we can run fairly fast. And it, it does kind of add to this. So... It's at 359, so we, we have got the, the right amount of timber here. Uh, the, sorry, the, the econ economy is on hard. Right, that's good. So we have 359 for that one. We're up to 572. Now, in order to be able to get a small vehicle, the small, the, the cheapest tractor that we've got is 59,000. We don't really have a tow rope or anything like that that we can use at the moment to go with it. We don't have that mod available, which is very unfortunate. I would very much like that, or a horse mod or something like that to go with it. Those aren't available. We can't do that. We could go here. That's 37,000 for that one. Maybe we could bring some bigger logs up, but uh, it's still getting it up that ramp, right? We've, we've still got to get the things in here, so we, we've got that to account for. I mean, hopefully the timber lorries and stuff will be able to get in and out there without any trouble. Um... I really hope they can. Uh, skid steers down here is 35,000. Again, it's a possibility. Maybe we can save up for that. But then if you look into cars in here, um, 30,000 for a pickup. The Mahindra there is 17,200. So I reckon if we could get... I mean, that's 17,800 right there. If we could get the Mahindra, we could use that one at least. We can put a few more logs onto one load before we start moving anything around. And that is at least going to give us a little bit of a boost. It's going to help us out a tiny bit. It's not going to be the greatest, because we've got such a long way to go. The reason I didn't buy this piece of land right next to the sawmill to start with is because if you have a look on here, we go to lands like that. We've got that piece there. This one actually goes all the way around. It buys the shop. It buys the... It, well, it actually buys all of those all the way around. Um, but land value there, 968000 which is an obscene amount of money, right? That That is a, a, a very large chunk of money, so I didn't want to buy that one. 
I wanted to leave that one as it was. So we'll go over here and we will grab this next piece of timber. Right there. Let's see what this one gets us. Take this one in through. Um, I mean, if we do this a few times and we find that it is indeed getting a little bit too tedious just running backwards and forwards with these, we might try and do something different. I am going to go and have a look and see if there is another way. I don't think there is. I think he has actually built a solid wall all the way around this map. There's obviously there's a link in the description down below to the actual map, um, which I think includes a link to his Facebook page. I think I've included that. Um, well, I will be including that, I should say. Right, 400 there. So we've made our first thousand. We have made our first thousand. We can climb up here. Oops. Okay, I didn't actually mean to jump right out over. My parkour skills leave a little bit to be desired. Um, yeah, and you can see over here, there's no, there is no easy way in and out of this place. At all. I can come over to here. Onto this piece over this side. What have we got here? Oh, this is just like an open piece of land. We can go and do something with. But it's, you know, we can place things down here if we want to. And that's quite a cool thing. Is there is a few of those scattered around. You've also got a few big rocks scattered around as well. There's not very much dead wood lying down in the, in, in the forest. You haven't got much in the way of dead wood at all. So we, we mostly we're smaller trees in that. Um, but to start with, we want to be we're going to be cutting down some trees, cutting them up, and then why aren't you moving? I think I'm going to go up like that and hope that it cuts all the way across. What are you doing? Oh, it's because it was such a yeah because of the funny angle on it, wasn't it? Right. Let me do that. Take you all the way up through there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick this one up. I absolutely don't know if I'm going to be able to pick this one up at all. So I'll just take those off of there. I think that's all of it. I can pick that one up. Let's go and run in with this one a minute. And then we've got... You know what? I've been wanting to do that every time I've run past it so far. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. It had to happen. We don't have any sawdust. We, we, we're not making sawdust or wood chips or anything at the moment. Um, there is a wood chipper. There isn't a wood chipper that you can dr that drives itself. So we're going. We obviously we're going to be looking at different mods that we can use. And when we come to doing another super hardcore series, we have to decide if we're still going to do this same formula where we start on a forestry map, or if we're going to move to something different. I see no reason why we would need to move from this one anytime soon. Um, it's It's got everything that we need, and I feel that it's, it's not laid out very easily, which adds to the challenge. I like the challenge of this, that it's not laid out easily. It does make it more difficult for us. We've got more that we're going to have to do in it. Like, if I come... I, I'm, don't have access to the land. See, I can't, I can't get that one. Absolutely not allowed to take that one. Now, what about this piece of timber over here? Ooh, I can pick this one up. Right, ideal. So I bring that one up through, and then we'll go and scramble off after yet another tree. What did I say we're going to need? About $12,000. So far, we've got $1,200. And I, I don't know what the nighttime payment is going to be. Now, I'm thinking that we stick to a minimum of five times speed, unless we're fast-forwarding so that we can harvest a crop a bit later on. Um, and the only time we can change it down is later on when we're in the middle of actually harvesting crops, just because it makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? Um, I mean, we don't have to worry about anything... Hang on, what am I doing? I'm pressing that one there. We don't have to worry about uh, anything wilting, so that shouldn't make a difference. Really, it's only for when we're planting crops. We're planting crops. We're not going to be wanting it fast-forwarding too much. Um, so we don't have like loads of different growth stages in the field. We're not going to be ready for planting a field yet, though. Right, we've we, we got to cut down a whole load of trees... We've also got to cut up a whole load of... we got some big trees in here. 
Right, I mean, we, we do have some seriously big trees in here. So, um, that might go in our favour. The problem is, that the one thing I'm not sure about is I don't know where we can cut the tree in order to be able to carry as much as possible. Right, I know that I can't carry the soul tree, right? I know that much. I'll bring you over here. Now, when we did this last time, with our, with our hardcore series, when we, when we did it last time, the one thing that we did have was the sawdust mod. So what we were doing was we were getting a whole tree and then we were taking it into the sawmill. We were chopping it up there and we were sort of accumulating piles of sawdust around where we were doing all the work. And then we would take those piles of sawdust and we would sell them. We'd make a bit of secondary income now. Can I pick... Ah! I made a mistake there. I'm trying to see roughly where I can pick up. I still can't pick it up. And now I've got little... These ones we're going to be saving up for the Mahindra. Right, when, when we get the Mahindra, we'll be saving these up for the Mahindra. So we can just put those over there and we won't worry about moving them now. I want to just chop... Little bits off the bottom of this until I can actually pick the thing up. And it's, it's actually quite good. I think this is a good idea. We can, we can soon make a little pile of them. Uh, can we pick it up? Yes, there we go. Right, so that is as much as we can carry in one go. Let's try and do it from the other end next time so that we can get like a bigger log. We, we cut it uh, maybe directly in the middle. Because these long pointy bits at the top, see, I reckon we get less money from them. So we carry this one up, and the next one, we'll, we'll cut it down, we'll, we'll trim all the branches off, and we'll chop a piece, we'll, we'll chop it uh, just above midway, I should think, and then we'll see how much of the lower end that we can actually carry. So I'll drop that one down there. Uh, we've got a nice long piece of timber there. Sell that. Uh, it's 461. We've done a little better on that previously. It is, well, what is our target? It is, oh no. Oh, crumbs. 17,000. I thought it was 12,000. No, it's 17,000. I might try and find a mod for a cheaper vehicle. If any anything at all. I mean, the Mahindra is a beautiful, wonderful vehicle because of how fast it travels. But it's got a very, very small bed on it. If I could find, like, a compromised vehicle that cost half of what the Mahindra costs um, and it's got a smaller bed on it still, maybe. I, I don't really know. Um, or it goes really slow. Slow, I think, would be good. If, if we could get one that it travels, like, inordinately slowly, that, that would be quite cool. Let me come down here. Right, take that down there. And chop that one off. Okay. So now I want to just trim these branches off. Go up through. There we go. Trim that one all the way up through. So I want to see how much of the tree I can actually carry at one go. So I'm going to bring that one to about there. I'm going to cut that one off. We'll definitely be able to carry this top piece. That won't be any problem. So I'm going to leave that there actually for Mahindra. It's this one. I can't carry that one. That one's too big. So we'll take a slice off the top. I'll, I'll take a, a bit like that so we've got enough that we can actually put onto the Mahindra. There. We take off kind of that sort of length. And that's it. Right, so this is the maximum that I can pick up. There's, there's quite a big log now. That's not bad. I think that one's all right. About 46480 was the maximum that we were able to carry at any one point. We're not getting any hourly costs, are we? So we got 2,200 at the moment, and it's 10 o'clock. We've made it to 10 o'clock so far at five times speed. Uh... I'm very tempted to speed it up just to see what our overnight costs are for the actual loan. Because we've got a half a million dollar loan. That is a very expensive loan for a piece of land and one chainsaw. Right? That, that's all we've got to show for it. So what do we get here? 470. It would appear that we can carry just under $500 a time. And at $17,000, we're going to be looking at 35 trips minimum, more like four, 40 trips. We're going to have to go backwards and forwards 40 times in order to be able to do this. I am wondering if we should increase our loan and maybe change this. So I'm going to keep doing this for now on this one, I think. Um, actually, I don't, think, I don't know if I can take any more loan out. No, I can't. Right, loan is out of the question. 
We're not allowed to get any more loan. The Mahindra is 17,000, so I want something like the Mahindra, but cheaper. So it's got to be, in order to be able to sort of fit in and be reasonable, it needs to be cheaper. So it would need to be slower and just not very good all round. It, it would have to be quite a poor sort of vehicle. I don't want, any, I don't want anything that is any reasonable quality. All right, let's get that one out. Drop you down there. Yeah, I'll pick that one up. That one is another piece to go over here on our stack of timber. And then... Oh, oh there he is. Right, that one there. That one is to be all trimmed off. There. So we may as well cut them from the bottom because we are... Um, it's easier to carry the smaller, thicker chunks in the likes of the Mahindra or something similar, whatever I can get. Um, that old pony and trap mod that we had in FS17 would have been absolutely wonderful in here by now. It was extremely slow. Very, very slow. That would have been absolutely perfect. But I have not yet seen that one converted over to FS19. Um, so I'm a bit disappointed that that one's not available. That being said, I will have a hunt around. I'll see if I can find anything similar to that. Uh, maybe we can... Push bike. Uh, just, just a push bike with like a, a carriage on it. That'll take a bit more than I can carry by hand. Drop you down there. And you are 528. We are making... We're, we're actually making records now. If I could get something that we could sell... If we could buy for $5,000. I think that would be a realistic sort of approach actually. $5,000. I reckon that we could almost reach $5,000 in today's episode. So if we, could, if we could find something that we could buy for five grand in today's episode, we've at least made a start. Everything we move is still going to have to be moved by hand for quite some time. It's just the long trips. And I'm sure now you appreciate why I didn't buy up there by our starting house up there. Because that would have just been like painful, right? The, 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 I didn't think there was any need for it to be that painful for us to just to start off with. Um... I'm wondering if we should go for one of these. Are these heavy? We don't actually know. I don't, I don't know if these are heavier or not. So let's let's chop one of these down, shall we? Let's take you down there. Go through. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right onto our pile of timber. That's just great. That's just wonderful. Um, the other thing that should be noted is that these, even if you've got what's just some of those little twigs left, the timber um, runner, the, the auto-load timber runner, I don't think it actually auto-loaded at all if it had any of these branches left on. If there are any branches left on, it didn't auto-load. You had to get rid of all branches in order for the auto-load to work, which I thought was quite cool. I did like that about the auto-load. Uh, I do like that about the auto-load. We will be using that auto-load. Uh, don't, don't, don't you doubt it for a moment we will be using that auto load i'm not doing all of this without an auto load so let's go down to that point about there i think to start with and we'll see if we can carry that uh, apparently i cannot carry that so i'm going to go down to there and see if i can carry that one that is a big piece of timber there i can't carry that one either that is the one thing I miss with the Grizzly Hills map. Not the Grizzly Hills, with the um, the Pacific Inlet logging map. Do you remember how wonderful it was that he'd made the weight of all the timber just a little bit lighter than the standard game using his map? Right, let's just pull that out of there. And I got another piece over there. I'm going to drop down and then can't pick that one up. And I still can't pick that one up either. Let's cut another piece off. And I'll cut another piece off at this end as well. There. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep cutting one piece off until I'm able to pick it up. So we've got some more pieces there. Like that. And right, I can pick that one up so we can run off and we can go and sell this one. Then we've got to run back and we've got to get another. So we're slowly accumulating a pile of offcuts that we're going to want our vehicle to be able to carry. I'm definitely going to be looking for another vehicle. 
That's, that's definite. Um, I don't want to have to do this 40 times in total. Uh, what have we done so far? I think we've done, what, seven? So, we, yeah, we, we'd have another 30 trips to do. All the way up round here. All the way up round here because of how this map is set up. It's, it's difficult. It's definitely going to be difficult. But I do like the challenge of it. It's going to make it more of a challenge. That's only 400, that one. That was less money for that one. Less money's not good. We don't want less money. We want more money. It'd be great if I could, like, cut one of those and they went over the wall and we could just have it inside the sawmill. That'd be so much better. We can't do that. I can't even cut these up. Well, you can't cut those up anyway. Oh. I can, but I can't pick the thing up because I don't have access to the land. So it doesn't really matter. That's, that's not mine. Not allowed it. Don't touch. Go away. Let's go back over here. We'll see if we can pick up this other piece. Um, maybe I should just mod the Mahind like alter the the Mahindra mod a little bit. Uh, I don't think I'll do that. Right. So I bring that one down there. There we go. We chop that one. Like that. I can't. Pick did I? I did cut it. That is not a very big piece. I mean, seriously, I have not got a very big piece. It's because I'm chopping the top off. This is just getting progressively shorter and shorter and shorter. I'm not going to be able to pick up very much of this at all in a minute. Uh, look at these. Look at how much timber we got right there. There. That's it. That's all I can... I'm going to take this piece up because I want to see if it's actually worth it. There's a lot of weight in this particular piece. It might be that it is actually better for us to just go for the higher bits. Didn't like that, did it? It's kind of getting a little... I think, I think it lagged ever so slightly there. Well, I don't know. I've had this happen before. I, know my, I can hear my computer doing some strange things. It does that occasionally. It, it decides that... Oh, hang on. No, we, we, we're going to do some little bits of work in the background. Just to try and mess you up a bit. And then it, it slows things down. Right. What are you going to get me? Piece of timber. Probably not very much. 300. So the the top piece of the tree of a standard pine tree appears to be the best source of income for us at the moment. And we're aiming for about 5 grand so that I can hopefully find a mod before next episode that will give us 5 grand that will cost us about 5 grand. We've got two more episodes this week and Unfortunately for you lot, I will have them both recorded before I see any comments about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So there's no way of changing it. So I'm just going to leave that piece there for now. I'm not going to bother cutting that one up. Uh, this one, that was quite a short piece. So really, if we're looking through here, we don't want those the other side of the road. That one's quite a tall one there. I do have that one over there. We could maybe work with. And I've got this one over here that we can work with as well. So let's go with this one first. Chop you down here. i got to be careful with the ones that are on the edge of our land. That they actually fall the right way. Because if they don't, you can't do anything about it. Unless you've got a vehicle that you can push them back onto your own land with. You can't cut them up. We have noticed that previously. You can pick them up. You can actually pick them up even when they're not on your own land. You can't cut them. So if you do happen to get... Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Right, if you do happen to get a piece of timber that has fallen wrong, I can pick that one up. Right, we'll take both of these. I'll come back and I'll get the other one as well. Um, but yeah, if you've got a piece of timber that has fallen wrong and it's fallen outside of your land, the only way you can cut it is if you've got a vehicle that you can move your piece of timber back onto your own land. I mean, I guess maybe you you could push it. Except that's not pushing, is it? I can push that one. But this one. Push it like that. Maybe. Doesn't like that, does it? It's actually making it jump around and do some very weird stuff there. I'm, I'm getting a bit concerned about what's happening to it. Um, at least I can still pick that up. I can't move that at all. Right? It's, it's just... It's not having it. So he, he doesn't like that one. But, I mean, this one over here, I might be able to move. I can. 
Okay, we, we're on to something here. We're on to something with this. We, we're going to have to do this a bit slowly and carefully. How much are we going to get for this one? Because this is more than I can carry. That's actually it, more than I can carry at once. Right, now we go this way. Now push that. Oop. Easy does it. So I can get this one in here. The other one has gone a little bit doolally, so I can't do anything with that one. Um, if I move, try and shunt that round a bit, we go like this. There we go. Nope. That way, easy does it. Down a little bit. Bring that up round over to there. A bit more about there. This is where it's going to put like push through the ground or something. We're going to have it's, it's going to bug out or something before we quite get it all the way up there. I'm curious how much we get for just one of these to see whether it's actually worth all this effort. Because you can't do it by picking it up. But you, I love the way that you can actually push things along. So I need to push this one into the cell point over there before I do anything else. So I bring you over there. Go on, we're doing all right. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then drop that one down there. Right, now we go over here. How much do we get for that one? We get 473. It's all both of them. A what? So I have no way of knowing how much that old rotten stump sold for. Because both of them together was 473. I'm disappointed with that. I thought the other one wouldn't have sold. Oh well. We got another 473 in the kitty. We've got uh, $4,381 now. That one's not doing... I've got one more stump over. I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to do anything with them. We'll run back and we'll grab another one back here. We have just about run out of time for today's episode, I should think. Um, it's probably getting a little bit dull just watching me run backwards and forwards doing this. Uh, I hope you happy uh, you're happy with the plans that i've got for this series so just to recap there are no missions on this map so we won't be doing any of that we have a very high loan of half a million dollars we are not allowed to take out any more loan under any more so under any circumstances we cannot take out any more loan and we are also the we would like to try and repay some of our loan but that's not important it's up to us if we want to do that I have increased the amount that we have to pay in interest charges for our loan. I don't know how that is going to affect us in gameplay. We are on hard mode. We're on hard economy. We're on everything is as difficult as possible. And we're not allowed to lease any machinery whatsoever. While we're doing forestry work only, we'll have a minimum time scale of times five. Because that means that... You know, the loan repayments are going out faster. If we have it only on times one, then we're not getting any loan repayments going out. Once we start getting crops going into the ground, obviously it'll be a bit different if we decide that we want to um, slow time down a bit in order to get a harvest done and not have, um, like, loads of different bits of crop at different growth stages in the field, then that's fine. Not, we, we can do it like that. But for now, until we're planting any crops... We will stick to a minimum of times five. I was thinking about maybe times 15, but I'm thinking at the moment, at least until we've got some sort of vehicle that we can transport trees around with, or transport logs, um, times five is probably challenge enough. Um, it will become more of a challenge. Now, if I bring that, I'll chop that one off there. It doesn't seem to be worth carrying these small bits all the way up so I'll just take that over and I'll drop that there and then we get the bigger log that we've got over here and we'll take that one. Oh, I can't pick that one up great I didn't chop enough off another one off of there um, right one thing I'm going to try to do like I said before next episode is I'm gonna to try to find a slightly cheaper vehicle because the cheapest way of moving bulk timber at the moment is to buy a Mahindra at seventeen thousand two hundred dollars and I'm sure you can appreciate now that it is going to take us an entire week's worth of episodes in order to do that and we've got no other 
sort of alternative gameplay. So I've spent an entire episode just running these backwards and forwards, and there is no other way that I can do this. There's no shortcuts. Uh, there's no easy route into the sawmill either. This is the only way in and out of the sawmill. There are no other cell points. We've got nothing else whatsoever. I will be getting cell points later on, and we're going to decide what the um, price point of that will be. There, we've made our $5,000 target. Um, so, that's something I would like to hear from you in the description down below, is how much do you think a universal cell point should cost? As far as I know, the universal cell points that I've been looking at accept everything. I'm talking about bales, pallets of wool, eggs, milk, all of the crops. There is literally a universal cell point that we can slap down. And we would probably slap it down inside that facility in there somewhere. Just put that down on the ground. We could, in order to add a logistical challenge, we could add it to the shop over here. We're going to go and have a look at the shop a minute. This is the shop. In order to add a logistical challenge to this game, we could indeed put our universal cell point over here, which would add in that logistical challenge, or we could put it over here at the gas station, which is the only other point that we've got that we can go and visit. Um, I don't know if that's a water point or what. Uh, but yeah, if you've got that right, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Was there, you've got the, the sawmill there. That one there. Right. Sawmill. That is it. That is your three points. You've got the sawmill, the gas station, and the shop. Those are the only ones that you got on here. Sawmill, gas station, shop. Okay. It's the only ones you got in here. So, I wouldn't do it here. We do have the gas station here that we can come and get to. Again, it's not the easiest one to get through. This ro this map is not built for massive road trains, which is just fine, because we probably wouldn't be using massive road trains anyway. But, yeah, it could be an interesting thing to have the universal cell point put down up here at the shop, rather than over here at the sawmill. It does depend... It, sort of, it does depend in large part on where we can actually place it, because... We don't own the land, like the sawmill is the land that owns the shop as well. So you've got, the, there's actually a little chunk, what, what, what is that piece up there? Uh, right, it's just like a border zone up there. But yeah, it's, um, it could change things around a little bit, right? If we buy that, then you've got these extra little bits kicking around as well. That you'd have to pay. This is going to cost us close to a million dollars to buy that. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to buy that in order to be able to make the rest of it work. So that that, that would kind of be out of the question. So if we can place the universal cell point down at the shop, maybe we could do it there. I mean, Maybe we could seriously consider doing it right at the far end of our own piece of land up here somewhere. I see. Actually, I'm going to go there now, and I'm going to have a look just before we leave. So we'll just visit this one. And you can see this one dumps us right up here on the outside of the sawmill. You can't even jump into the sawmill quickly and easily. I don't have the Place Anywhere mod active because the Place Anywhere drastically reduces the cost of um, the terraforming thing as well. And I didn't want that. That's more challenge onto this. Everything about this is going to be as difficult as possible, right? And the idea is that we want to build up a farm. And I'm wondering about what targets we should set ourselves. I think that one target should be debt-free. We want to clear all of our debts. We've got a half a million dollar loan. We want to clear that one out. We can't have any more. Um, obviously, we can't lease any machinery. So that's uh, another, you know, that's not really much of an additional challenge. But, you know, what sort of challenge should we say? Should we say, you know... Um, 10 hectares of land ploughed up and being farmed? Should we say a certain number of livestock? Should we have to have um, 400 cows and 300 sheep before we can call it quits on the map and say that we've successfully done this? What sort, you know, it, are there any particular challenges you think that we should aim for or are you happy for us to just 
keep going with this um, until we grow desperately bored with this map and we decide to move on and try it all over again on a new one. Because, let's face it, as we get better, as things improve, it's, it's obviously going to become more farming and less of the initial struggle to survive and get by. Um, and this is the the kind of the, the interesting stage right at the beginning here. So maybe later on, it's not going to become quite so interesting. Now, we could maybe put a universal cell point right up here at this end. This is as far this, this is as far up as our land goes. So we could say that we could put the universal cell point up there, which is quite a long way from that sawmill. And then all bales and everything that we have would have to go up there. Because obviously we're going to be working down here. So there's a slight logistical challenge transporting goods up there. It's a little bit further. It's not an instant runoff. Um, or we could maybe try putting it down at the shop. I don't think it's... Excuse me. I don't think it's going to work placing it at the shop. Um, is, 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 is there a cheap placeable? We might be able to find out. Decorations. Uh, yeah, sandcastles. Right there. Right, now look at that. Terrain cannot be deformed. You don't own this land. And I reckon that that's what it's going to say, is that we don't own the land over here at the shop. Now, where is the shop? The shop is... There's the gas station. You don't own... It's, 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 it's screaming at me that I don't own the land. I cannot place anything down here because I don't own the land, so I don't think we're going to be placing any universal cell points up here. I don't think that's going to be a thing. So we may have to put the universal cell point in our own land in order to be able to make that work. See, see, we, we, we've got the, the cheap things down there, but there's, there's no way of easily moving stuff. But anyway, that's all we've got time for today. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And remember, get into the comment section and give me your views and opinions on this series. What would you like to see? What would you not like to see? Is there anything in particular you want me to avoid? I will state right now, I will be using auto-load trailers. I veto any demand for not using auto-load. I will be using them. Other than that, I want to hear suggestions and what do you really want and what do you really not want to see. Uh, what kind of things do you think we should be aiming for? Um, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so we're just kind of setting up at the moment. Are you happy with my rule set that I've set? I've, I've set for us. You know, we, we, we've got certain things that we're allowed to do and we're not allowed to do. It is definitely going to limit us. It's going to be much more difficult that we can't lease anything. We could have already gone and leased a Mahindra by now. And we could be running backwards and forwards with that. But we can't do it. Unless we can buy it, we can't have it. Which is why I'm going to try and find a mod. But anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.